The next step in the series to learn perspective drawing and gain confidence in perspective drawing is to really play with it. So I've got these exercises that will be more intuitive. So the overview was a more technical look. Although I stripped a lot of the terminology out to simplify it, I still believe that the best way to learn is to have fun. So this strips even more of it out and it just creates an image that um, is motivating in itself. So at each stage of the drawing, you'll be learning a different aspect of perspective. So we're gonna start with the one point perspective exercise and then it's gonna be a video per exercise, I think, because there's quite a lot of drawing time involved. I want these videos to be something that you can set down and really get some drawing sessions done. And yeah, so then we'll move on to two point perspective down the line. So once you've kind of had the one point perspective exercise on your belt, you can move on to that. And then three point perspective. So once we've done those and you've shared all your work, I'm really excited to see what you come up with. Um, yeah, then we'll move on to four point perspective, camera perspective, aerial perspective. There's so much more uh, measuring along a plane, division, there's, there's, there's so much that we can look into and learn from, but I must stress the importance of learning the foundations first before we kind of get bogged down in the other stuff because once the one point, two point, three point perspective feels quite intuitive and quite natural, you'll have so much more confidence. So I'm hoping through the, by the end of the series, so many people will have scrap this impression of perspective drawing as being really difficult. It's not, it's actually very simple, but there's so much to it. So as long as we break it down into very um, small sections, then, and, and really master each one of those sections, there's no reason why you can't, you know, in a month's time, have a complete understanding of perspective drawing, which is the goal. So here we can see the drawing that we're going to be creating in this exercise. So I don't want you to follow this really strictly. You can definitely interpret it in your own way with different shapes and completely different positions. But this is kind of what we're aiming for by the end of the process. At a glance, this does look fairly complicated, but if you follow the steps, then everyone is capable of drawing this composition. So to start, I'm going to show you a time lapse of the full process. Um, and this is a, at least an hour's worth of drawing here. So I'm going to show you a time lapse that will show you the whole exercise in a nutshell. And then we're going to slow it right down to real speed where I'll be talking through each stage of the exercise. So as with the overview, I'm drawing a reference cube. I won't be referring to it quite as much as the overview as I won't be needing to because it's more intuitive, but it's always worth remembering the context when we're talking about perspective. Then we'll be drawing a number of cubes talking about why their positions are affected by the viewpoint, i.e. the viewer's position in relation to the cube. Once we have that fairly regular grid of cubes, those five cubes in the center, we're going to start really expanding on that and pushing the exercise so we can better our understanding of one point perspective. Again, we're going to really kind of just go for it here and, and draw lots of rectangles around that composition till it's fairly densely populated with these volumes. Using the same process that I've already spoken through, we'll then draw back to the vanishing point, creating this fairly complicated composition of three-dimensional volumes. Once we have all the wireframes drawn in the composition, we're going to use the thickest line weight to draw around the volumes to bring out the spatial edge. So with adding this line weight to the spatial edge of these volumes, that's going to decide which are in the foreground or which are in the background. So it's really important to get an understanding of line weight and how we can use it to do that. Then using the middle line weight, we're going to be looking at the planar edge. Then we'll be moving on to hatching. The hatching is a really important process to exercise because it establishes the viewer's position in relation to these volumes and also is a great chance to just really exercise your hatching skills. That's a quick run through of the exercise, but let's really slow it down now and talk about how we exactly do that. 
So in terms of pens that I've used in the video, I'm using a really fine 0.1 Copic Multiliner for the finest construction lines. So then we've got the middle line weight, which I'm using a 0.2, and that's what we're using to look at the planar edges. I'll go into that through the exercise. And finally, the brush nib. So this gives the thickest line, and that's what we'll use to really emphasize the importance of line weight in terms of bringing forms to the forefront or to the background and how we can use that outline. I'll include the description to the pens and the materials I'm using in the video description. As long as you use three different line weights or if you're using a pencil then you can apply a different pressure to create that same effect then you can take part in the exercise and learn from it. So to begin the exercise, I'm going to start with drawing a reference cube again. As with the overview, this will help us just explain what's going on in the exercise and just serve as a reference, which is really important when we're drawing in perspective. As we run through in my overview video, the cube is made up of three sets of parallel lines, two horizontal sets and one vertical set. So if that doesn't make sense to you, then check out my overview video that's laying down the basics. I'll also be using the reference cube to again establish our direction of sight. Because we're using a one point perspective, that direction of sight will stay constant, but it's just always worth remembering and referencing the direction of sight when talking about perspective drawing. As this exercise is focused on one point perspective, the direction of sight and the angle of direction of sight will stay constant. If we were to change the angle of the direction of sight, then we would need to adopt a new method. This is covered in the overview video that I've already uploaded um, and will be covered in the two and three point videos on the next exercises. Ultimately, this fixed direction of sight is what keeps us being able to use one point perspective throughout this whole composition. So as with all these methods, we're going to start with the horizon line. So go ahead and draw that in. Now for your single vanishing point. Again, this is a one point perspective, so you'll only have one vanishing point. Now draw the front face of the cube so that the vanishing point is fairly central to this cube. Because we've drawn the front face of the cube, we can simply draw the lines from the corners back to the vanishing point. Something to remember throughout this whole exercise is that the parallel lines leading away from us will all be converging at the vanishing point. Now I'm drawing a second figure by the reference cube. The direction of sight and picture plane have not changed their angle, but if the viewer position shifts to the left, the cube will appear to the right of the vanishing point. Let's draw that in our composition using the same process. Now let's do the same for if we were to stand to the right of the cube, then the cube appears to the left of the vanishing point, as it will be to the left of the viewer. The four figure is below. Let's depict that cube in the composition.
As the figure is below the cube, the cube itself will appear above the vanishing point. So now we're going to raise the viewer up and indicate what we would see in the composition. You've probably worked out that the cube will now appear below the vanishing point. So go ahead and draw the fifth and final cube in place. So with our five cubes, here we can start to see the freedoms and importantly the limitations of one point perspective. So now I'm going to draw in a number of rectangles around our existing cubes that all represent the front faces of three dimensional forms. Try and draw these shapes fairly randomly around the composition and don't worry about drawing them similar to mine. With those rectangular shapes drawn in, let's draw construction lines from their corners back to the vanishing point. These lines that we're drawing back to the vanishing point are parallel to one another. These diagonal lines all leading towards the vanishing point are parallel to one another.
What we have now are lots of cuboids leading way into the distance, so now we need to draw in the back faces of these forms. You can decide how shallow or how deep the forms will be. The closer to the vanishing point, the deeper the form. To draw in a back face, start by drawing a line to connect two diagonals. Where your horizontal or vertical line intersects the diagonals, this represents the corner of your cube. So from that corner, draw either a vertical or horizontal line to the next diagonal. Repeat this process until you have a complete rear face of the cube. Now I'll go ahead and complete the other forms in the same way. You'll notice I tend to draw through the line, not to it, and often before the line, not from it. This really helps when you're drawing, especially with perspective and working up construction lines. So now those forms are complete, let's continue to add forms. I'd suggest to start drawing the front faces first and working back to the vanishing point, but if you're feeling confident and want to just mix up a little bit, then you can draw the back face and then extrude from the vanishing point. So you'll notice that we're still drawing wireframe transparent forms. This can get fairly confusing, but it's a great way to learn as we need to establish every edge of the form. So to increase the complexity and the challenge of this exercise, we can go ahead and draw more rectangles around our existing composition. So now you have these two-dimensional shapes surrounding the three-dimensional composition. 
Let's extrude them back to the vanishing point and turn them into 3D forms. When drawing in the construction lines from the corners back to the vanishing point, a lot of you will be tempted probably at this stage to start turning your paper so that the construction lines feel more comfortable and it's easier to get a straighter line. But I'd really use this opportunity to push your drafting ability and instead keep the paper stationary and really use your arm and your wrist and your hand to draw these lines at all different kinds of angles. Remember to go at your own pace and don't get stressed about mistakes. Making mistakes and seeing mistakes is the best way to learn. Drawing in these construction lines is such a great way to develop your awareness of the vanishing point and improves your ability to keep track of it whilst drawing. This is something that will feel more and more natural as time goes by. I'm going to keep drawing away in real time here, but feel free to skip ahead to the next stage.
So now we have our mass of 3D forms drawn in wireframe. I want to show you how we can give them order using line weight. By doing this, you're defining the spatial edge. Our understanding of the spatial edge can be used to further convey the experience of three dimensions. You can see that by drawing the form's complete outline, brings it to the foreground. Go ahead and use the thickest line weight to define the forms and give them order. I won't be speeding this video up, so you can just follow along and see how I get on with it. But the main thing is, if you make a mistake, please don't start again. And just work through it and see what happens.
Looking at the composition now after our use of the thicker line weight, we can see that it's got much more order. We can see that the volumes become more solid and we can see that some are in the foreground and some are in the background. We're going to use the middle line weight to define the planar corners. These are where two visible planes meet. What this will do is give those lines dominance over the non-visible edges. You can jump ahead to the next step or draw along in real time. Moving on to hatching, using a vertical hatch, shade all the right side faces of the forms. This stage is great for developing your hatching skills, as well as your understanding of the viewer's relationship to the forms.
Now using a horizontal hatch, shade all top facing edges of the forms. Despite me missing the largest top face, you can see that all top faces below the horizon line are visible. All those above are hidden. Now hatch the left facing planes with a vertical hatch.
Finally, we're going to hatch the underside of these forms. So it's back to a horizontal hatch. I'm going to do a second pass to further darken the underside of the forms. By making the lower faces darker, we can create an impression of a light source from above.
So this is a really good exercise for gaining confidence in one point perspective. We're looking at strengthening our awareness of the vanishing point as well as our ability to naturally and intuitively find it. We're also looking at drawing in wireframes. So we're looking at a kind of structural knowledge and awareness of the form and how they intersect. Also line weight to kind of make that decision, bring out that hierarchy in the composition. And along with just really picking up our hatching ability. One Point Perspective is really popular for depicting interior spaces. That's something I'll cover in another episode. So I hope you enjoyed the One Point Perspective exercise. Now, the intention of the exercise, as I stated, was that this should be more intuitive. It shouldn't be about being distracted with all the technical information and the, and the terminology that can often make perspective drawing really quite, uh, well, feel at least very complicated. So I hope that's helped. The next exercise I'd recommend is the two-point perspective exercise. It's in the same vein, but slightly more advanced. But if you've done that, you're definitely ready for the two-point perspective.